Hello everyone! In part 0 of this project tutorial, we train a random forest classifier to detect sleep or awake status from EEG signals. We've loaded the data, visualized it, and selected the power spectra density feature across 5 frequency bands as our main discriminator of states. In part 1, we'll add more participants to our leave one out subject cause validation scheme and distinguish between 3 sleep stages instead of only 2. Let's first take a look at the high-level overview of the five step of our analysis. First, we will load the EG data from the raw data files. EG data is a very complex time series that holds different kinds of information at different frequency bands. There is five main bands of interest for us, so delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma, which we don't see here. The data is stored in what's called the EDF data format, which structurally resembles image internal structure with the header and the data record section. The details here aren't too important, since we'll be using a library called ME Python to load the data properly. Just know that all of the signals and meta information per participant are properly structured within these files. Then we'll cut the EG data into 30 second chunks around a given label called Epoch. The raw data will look somewhat like this for the different type of sleep stages. In this part of the project, we'll use two channels for the EEG recording and chunk the analysis to three classes. We're going to have the awake stage for class 0, we're going to have sleep stage 1 to 3 as class 1, and then finally we're going to have the REM stage as a separate class. Then we'll calculate our main feature over 30 second epoch, which is called the power spectral density. The PSD, power spectral density, is defined as the distribution of power across frequency components and will average the information across the five bands specified previously. The specific method to calculate the power spectral density is the multi-taper method, which is pretty robust against noise. Then we'll train the machine learning model on the three class mentioned previously. We won't get too fancy here for this analysis just yet, we'll just use the random forest classifier again. Finally, this machine learning classifier will be cross-validated using a leave one out subject cross-validation scheme. In the previous tutorial, we used just two participants, but in this one, we'll use 10. The methodology overview will be to train on nine participants and leave one participant out for the validation. We'll then iterate across each of the participants. We'll leverage scikit learn for the machine learning portion, specifically the leave one group out cross validator to implement a leave one subject out cross validation scheme. And that's kind of it. So let's jump into the code and see what's up. If you want more information about the previous overview, you can check out the previous video. Uh, for now, we're going to go through all of the five stages. So first, you need to install uh, the ME Python library. So here is the import that we need. So matplotlib numpy and a bunch of stuff from scikit-learn. The main difference here is going to be the leave one group out uh, cross-validation scheme that we're going to use. So let's get that. So here are the experiment variable that we have. So we have our uh, target classes, so label one two and three uh, internally in the data we it's actually called sleep stage one two three and four so it's an old data set from 1995 i believe uh, and this is rem sleep over there this is what we need uh, for this experiment this is our definition of all of the frequency band from uh, delta up to uh, beta and the number of participants we're going to use here is 10. there's actually way more participants in this uh, uh, data set but for now, we're going to use 10 to illustrate the, what's the, how to do the leave one out subject cross validation scheme. OK, so step one, we'll load the data and pre-process it. So the uh, function we're going to use is the same one as before. Um, so if we look at it in our data, we're going to change some of the annotation from uh, these to just be one. All of these will be mapped to two and all of these will be mapped to three. Exactly what we need for that part over here. So we fetch the data using this function uh, from MNE Python for this specific data set. And then we're going to read the raw EDF file. We're going to read the annotation, which is another EDF file. We're going to combine them together uh, over here. And before that, we're just going to trim a bit the awake stage because uh, they, are, they have fairly long um, recording of the participant before they went to sleep. Uh, so it's the same thing as before, we just keep four hours for each participant before and after they uh, went to sleep. And over there, we're going to create some event and this event will be used to uh, create our epochs that we need over there. So exactly the same thing stuff as before. And here is the difference. Uh, we're going to load number of participants and store them into this array, all participant epochs here. Um, and then here we're iterate for the participant ID. We're calling the function, we're going to load the data and then we're going to append it 
There's nothing too fancy over here. We're just iterating over there. So we finished loading all of the data. If you see it for each of the participants we're iterating on, there's gonna be two file and it's over here in this uh, root folder for our collab. Um, you can run this thing uh, uh, locally, by the way, but I choose to run it on, on collab just for convenience sake. Uh, and so you have these two files that are going together. These two files are going together. So we've loaded them up and then this is uh, used to create our epochs over there. So let's take a look at what actually the epoch look like over here. So we have a few of them. So the first participant, we have all of these events and then we have about half of them being wakefulness, the rest being stage one, two, three, and four, and the rest being rest. And then that continues for each of these. Um, and we have a fairly balanced uh, sleep stage uh, <laughs> sleep stage wakefulness. We have a fairly balanced wakefulness um, and we have way less REM uh, sleep than everything else. So that's kind of how it looks. We have an unbalanced data set here. So if we look at the feature calculation, so the feature we're actually going to be uh, using, I've, I went into great length in the previous video, but basically you can compute the spectrogram here, um, the power uh, spectra density, and then the by default it will be the multi taper method. So this is what we're using. We're going to normalize it, and after that, uh, you're going to get the spectrum on each of the pun uh, specific frequency, like a very fine grain thing. And then we're going to uh, chunk it into like five specific band, and this comes from this the frequency band uh, experiment variable, which is over here, this thing, right? So we're going to get this one first, then this one then this one until the beta. And then we're gonna use that to uh, filter out um, our already calculated power spectral density. So we filter it out and then we are gonna take the average over here around like this whole block. We're gonna put that thing into the X feature list and then we're gonna create an umpire out of it. That's that. And then how it's used, uh, in the previous video, we used a pipe, right? A pipeline. Now we're just gonna uh, literally uh, calculate the feature and after that, put them into an X and Y. Once everything is calculated as a feature, then and only then we're gonna train our classifier. So it looks like this, uh, it's a bit different than before. Uh, we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna animate across all of the participant epochs that we've put into the list before. And there's gonna be three things, X, Y, and groups. Groups is used for the leave one subject out cross-validation scheme where uh, the ID of this will match the participant ID. And then uh, for, and it's gonna be the same size as the X and the Y um, array here. So how it look like, we calculate the EG power band, we give the epoch here, this we got it. Then we create our Y epoch, which is stored inside the events, array inside the epochs. And then we're gonna create our group epoch kind of array. And how we do that is we take the group ID of this participant, and then we're just gonna multiply it by the, the length of this to match. And we're good here. We're gonna create these array and then we're just gonna restructure them so that we can have a, a NumPy array for each of them. And we're done, we process each of the participants. So we're gonna have all of our X, Y, and groups. Now, if you look at the leave one participant out cross validation scheme, we have this. So we are instantiating uh, the leave one group out uh, iterator. And then uh, we're gonna uh, use the split function within we're gonna give it all the X, all the Y, all the groups, and then we're gonna get the train and test indices out. We're gonna first leave the zero out, then the one, the two, the three, until the ninth. So we're gonna train it like this, like before, with like no hyperparameter tuning at all. And then we're gonna index to get our Y train and our X train. And we're gonna fit the, the random forest classifier. Then we're gonna test using the same indices here. We're gonna test on the leave the left one out participant and get a white thread and then we can calculate a bunch of stuff so the accuracy here and then like confusion matrix and a whole bunch of classification um, score let's take a look at it so here are the results we have each of the results per participant over here the first one we can see we have an average score of 87 where we have 88 for the second participant that left out and you can see here that it's imbalanced so uh, sleep stage w oh excuse me sorry Wakefulness stage and uh, the sleep stage one, two, three, and four are kind of unbalanced compared to uh, the other one. So this one will be harder for sure 
uh, to uh, get it done because like you, you have just way less. Um, so wakefulness, good. Uh, one, two, three, four, five here. Uh, good, still uh, struggling a bit with the REM. And then this, this pattern kind of continue per participant, but it does, does fluctuate a bit. Yeah, we're doing we're doing great. And if we look at like the, the difference, so this one is REM, this one is uh, the right, the wakefulness, the one, and then this one is sleep stage one, two, three, and four. Um, where most of, for this participant, where most of the, the problem lies is um, distinguishing between uh, the sleep stage one, two, three, four, with like literally everything else here. Uh, and the RAM here is actually, it's, diff it's difficult to distinguish between this one. Um, we never confuse one with three. We can look at each of them, uh, but the results are pretty good, honestly, even though it's unbalanced. Uh, we're able to do that right. This is also pretty good. This one is uh, one of the best, I think, here. Um, pretty good again. Pretty good again. Yeah. So, yeah, overall, uh, we're doing great here with the tree class uh, classification. There seems to be something, though, with um, the REM stage and um, this stage, sleep one, two, three, and four. We, we've crammed a lot of uh, sleep stages into into one thing. Um, the next step here will be to dissociate it a bit more and just increase some, the amount of data. I think if we increase the amount of data, we should be able to have an even better classifier. So that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know down below. I'm here to help. I wish you all a great week and see you in the next video. Thank you.